I've said this before and it bears repeating again and again and again. The prodigal son could never leave the father's heart. His mind wandered into riotous living, which means disorderly thinking. But never let, he could never leave the father's heart. All oh, turn around and tell each other, you can't get out of God's heart. 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 Can't get out of God's heart. So if you walk down the street and see what looks like a bum to you, you just say silently to that person, you can't get out of God's heart. You can't get out of God's love. You see, I, I don't like titles of doctrines and so on, but if I could give myself one, yes, I'm a universalist. I believe that every prodigal son is gonna come home. It was the purpose of Jesus to empty hell. Oh, yes, sir. What did I say? And between the crucifixion and the resurrection, he went into hell and wrecked the place. Maybe we'll have to do another play when Jesus went to hell. Hallelujah. He illustrate how the devil saw him coming. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. and the demon said, oh, Mr. Devil, here comes Jesus. Uh -oh. and devil said, oh, hell. Oh, He's going to wreck my place. Lock the door, bar the window. <laughs> Jesus walks in. Hallelujah. Like a homeboy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ripped off the bars, kicked down the door, grabbed the devil by his lying neck, turned him around and kicked his knocked his teeth out. You got somebody down here that belongs to me. And the Holy Bible says, and it messes up Christian doctrine. <laughs> the Holy Bible says when Jesus arose on Easter morning, he led a host of captives on high. Doesn't fit in. The theologians don't know what the hell to do with that. They, they, they're so busy trying to get hell full, trying to send folks to hell who don't believe like they believe and who don't dance by their music. Be seated. Is this some good stuff here? Way out. Father, I've sinned. I thought I could be somebody else beside you. <laughs> Don't let your ego become your God. Right. Say that three times. Don't let your ego become your God. Don't let your ego become your God. Don't let your ego become your God. Let God be God. Let God be God. Father, I've sinned and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Now the esoteric mystic writer is trying to tell us something there. That false self-identity is not worthy. It's not that you are not worthy. Section 10, only the false identity and belief of a self separate from God, good love, spirit. All being is not worthy. That's the sinner. 
The prodigal son had remained always in the father's heart, always in the father's love. And within the context of that figure of speech, the father was always looking down the hill, watching for that boy. Say to the person next to you, God's looking for you to bless you. They had to add that last part on because they've got us so scared of God, you know. Uh, some people are even afraid to say, God will take care of you. <laughs> How do you mean that? <laughs> Never thought of that, huh? <laughs> The Redeemer who brings man back uphill to the Father's house to at one minute is the Jesus Christ realization that I and my Father are one. In Christian doctrine, there is that doctrine of the atonement. And do you see the way I've broken it down there? It means what? At one minute. But why is it so hard to get back to the Father's house and to get back to at one minute? One of the biggest stones in the way of mankind getting back to at one minute with God is organized religion. The scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, they were sad, you see. In organized religion, God must be somebody else. God must be something else. And even when Jesus came to show us that we too are sons of God, they put him on a pedestal and said, yeah, Jesus is the son of God, but the rest of you are sons of guns. Say, at one minute, three times. At one minute, at one minute. At one minute. And we must come back to at one minute with God. And I'm going to be dealing with this term born again, I think, in a lesson maybe next week. But when you're born again, you're not born into something that you are not and were not. It means you are born right back to where you were to begin with. One with God. You've come back to the Father's house at one minute. Section 11, again, the Redeemer who brings man back uphill to the Father's house to at one minute is the Jesus Christ realization that I and my Father are one. Thus, the realization of Jesus, God in us as us, makes the mind at one with all that is God, good, love, Holy Spirit, joy unspeakable. This is the atonement, the at one -ment. Section 12, the transgressors who find their way hard are those minds which leave the Father's house. And the Father's house is self-conscious oneness with God. Now you've got it. Under, underline it there. You talk about the Father's house, the Father's house, the Father. What is it? Self-conscious oneness with God. That's the Father's house. Section 12 again. The transgressors who find their way hard are those minds which leave the Father's house, self-conscious oneness with God, and attempt to have a separate being, power, and separate economy from the one God, good, love, all being. I must repeat something here that I have to tell you again and again when I'm teaching this. Some people think that, well, this is being so arrogant. To realize that you're one with God is the greatest humility. To try to be something else separate and apart from God is the greatest arrogance. That's what the devil did in that allegory. allegory. I want to be like the Most High. 
but he said that in his ego, you see. And that's a subtle difference. I am that I am. Don't try to make your ego that. That's not your ego. You just have to completely melt in to God. Hallelujah. Say to the persons next to you, melt into God. Just melt. Melt. Into God. Nothing is hard and difficult but what a person tries to do as a separate entity and identity from the one God, good, love, Holy Spirit, power. So when you get a hold of something and it seems so hard and so difficult, you know why? Your ego has gotten a hold of that. You're trying to do it as an identity, as an entity apart from God. That's the devil. If thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. If you're not doing well, it is because of some error thought, feeling, or imagination blocking God at the door, the entrance of your consciousness. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But you have to open the door and let the Christ in and say, okay, Jesus, be me. Works both ways. What is that prayer? Okay, Jesus, be me. be me. A day to pray that. Say it three times. Okay, Jesus, be me. Okay, Jesus, be me. Okay, Jesus, be me. That is the greatest humility. That is humbling yourself. I tried to, I've tried to do this as a separate identity. I've tried to do this as an ego, separate from God. But I surrender. Okay, Jesus, be me. Let's stand and do the closing affirmation. I want you to put that, if you've got a private mirror somewhere, I want you to put it up on your mirror. Now don't put it up there so somebody who does not understand it will see it. Or they'll find out that you are crazy. <laughs> somebody says, yeah, you know, Reverend Ike thinks he's Jesus. No, I don't think that Ike is Jesus. Jesus thinks that he's me. Amen. <laughs> and when I get to thinking like Jesus thinks, then Ike will disappear. And you see only Jesus. And then that's when the stuff really, the good stuff really begins. See, that's the ascension where you are sinned and sit on the right hand of the Father. For we are made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you stand it? Can you stand it? For we are made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. Okay, Jesus, be me. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, Jesus, be me. The affirmation in 15. Repeat it after me. I rest. I rest. And I am in perfect peace. I am in perfect peace. And who I am in God. And who God is in me. And who God is in me. This takes care of everything. This takes care of everything. Thank God. Thank God. Thus endeth the lesson.